I love no it's saying. just us. We, we have a quorum. Okay. okay. And so three others. So Tina, oh. Ski is here. Okay. Angie's here. <laughs> I'm here. Holly's <laughs> here. Okay. Um, great. Okay. I'm uh, catching up on our minutes really quickly. Uh, and then, oh, right, these are the old ones. Okay. Okay. Let's call the meeting to order. Did you, did you need to catch up on minutes? Um, I read them. Okay. Yeah. I have to record so you, you're ready. Oh, yeah. You're, yeah. We should record. Yeah, I have arthritis. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> That's not good. I'm trying to help it. Yeah. You got any ideas? Oh, I got yeah. a father who's got arthritis. And, yeah. You know? Okay. So, we will call this meeting to order of the regular meeting of the Heartland School Board at 6.06 .06 on April 5th, 2022. Um, and we are recording, right? Okay. Good. Um, so, and we have a quorum. Um, Sarah is working tonight. She had a book event somewhere. Um, so, she, this is all we got. Um, I gotta say, I miss Scott. It's, um, oh, no. we're, uh, <laughs> we're all one gender. <laughs> Yep. <laughs> Where's David? Yeah, I know. We don't know David. David's in Wednesday tonight. That's right. Yeah. Um, so. Okay. Uh, so, are there any changes or additions to the agenda? Just if we could move um, items for discussion IDL up, Tina would love to go first. Most Absolutely. definitely. Okay. okay. So, we'll put that before principal's report. Oh, you want one? Um, okay. Sorry, which one was that again? Uh, IDL. Thank you. Uh huh. Hey, Donna. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Okay. You're, I said hi to you. You're good. <laughs> <laughs> like, am I mute? Oh, no, you're good. I mean, people can hear you, oh, but yes. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. Happy to have you. Uh, yes. Uh, we are recording, though. <laughs> um, okay, any other changes or additions to the agenda? Colleen, you good? Okay. Heather, you good? Okay. Okay. I'm good. Uh, I'm good. So well, awesome. Um, and Colleen, you don't need to mute yourself unless there's background noise because it's. Okay, okay, great. I think it'll make you be. There might be background room. noise soon, but we'll see. <laughs> we'll, we'll, <laughs> we'll manage that when it happens. Okay, um, so I will take a motion to approve the minutes. And everybody was at both meetings, right? Yeah, so. I think so. Yeah. So, uh, if somebody wanted to make a motion to approve both sets of minutes at the same time, that would be acceptable. I have a motion to approve March 1st and March 9th minutes. Okay. Is there a second? I second. Uh, Heather, beat you to it. Gotcha. Um, <laughs> could have been the delay. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, and how are we doing minutes tonight? Do you want me to take minutes? Um, yeah, that would be helpful. I mean, well, could. technically, I am clerk. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but I, I, you don't have. I would have. I'd be happy to do it. I mean, you can do it too. It's fine. Go I forward. usually I can. But but usually, I, there's somebody that takes them off the record. I know that yeah. David sometimes jots. Yeah. yeah. Notes down. I. I mean, I write down first and seconds. And, okay. Um, I'll I'll keep some notes and then we'll merge our two. Okay. Because I don't want you to not be part of the meeting too. Okay. So. Um, okay. So we have a motion and a second for the approval of the minutes. Um, is there any discussion? I do not hear any. Okay, so we will take a vote. And we have to do a roll call. We're all here except Colleen. I think we can. Aye. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, I'm gonna go with no roll call. Okay. Okay. So all those of, all those in favor of approving the minutes of March first uh, and March 9th, uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Abstentions. Okay. So that passes four to nothing. Okay. Um, so 
Okay, so we're on to public participation and or announcements. Hannah, did you have any? Yeah. Uh -huh. You do? Okay. I do. Um, I have a question about how we can go back to dismiss as we used to be, like 2.50. Okay. I know you guys are trying to figure it out right now, it's 2.15. Um, I would love to just see like how we can help to be back to where we used to be. Um, so okay. I'm, I'm wondering how. Um, I'm glad that you joined us to bring that up. Thank you. Um, so, uh, so I'll give you a little bit of the background of how we got to 2.15. Um, so part of it was the transition from um, COVID times where we dismissed at <coughs> noon something, 12.30. Yeah, I think by the end of the year it was like 115. Yeah, and then we moved to 115. Um, and then, so we hadn't quite gotten back to our whole day. But then um, part of our negotiations um, with the teachers union um, it was to add uh, additional learning time at the end of their work day and additional collaboration time to implement um, portions of the strategic plan. And so that's how we got to the 215 dismissal. Um, but I know, because <laughs> Christine We're and I have talked. About it, yeah. So um, I'll let Christine take over from there. Yeah, so we, um, it's a great question and people need to know. Yeah. So it is on our administrative agenda, it's come up. We, we do want to um, continue to have, we call it collaborative practices time at the end of the day for staff. It's contracted time for them to do the work that they need to do, which is extensive. Um, and part of that is moving the strategic plan forward. Part of that is um, MTSS meetings, where we talk about kids and their needs and put, put um, supports in place. Part of that time is um, team meeting time. Um, and one big part of that time is co-planning, because part of our strategic plan is moving towards a more integrated model of teaching and learning. And if you're going to integrate curriculum, across um, teachers, they have to have time to do that work. So, but we recognize that it's, it can be a challenge um, on families at the middle of the day. So we are talking about moving that um, kind of a, a compromise to around 2.30, which is, um, I think we were at 2.40, 2.45 before COVID. Um, so having that time for teachers preserved, we're talking about how can we get the, um, people that aren't involved in those meetings necessarily to help with dismissal, which we have, I have to say, I'm pretty proud here, we can do it pretty quickly. Dismissal goes pretty smoothly. Some schools, it takes a little bit longer. So it is um, on our radar and, and something we're talking about. So the sooner we figure it out, the better, it sounds like, for okay. families. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we don't, we don't want to lose that time completely because it is pretty valuable. Um, but understand that it also is impactful on families. Because the, the teachers are contracted till 3.15. So we're trying to preserve a good um, chunk of time at the end of each day for them to do that work. Has, has anyone asked the teachers sort of like how they view this time and how they feel like, like do they feel like whatever time they're being given is being used in the ways that you're describing? Yes, absolutely. Okay. We've heard a lot from them about it. Um, okay. In fact, we, we, we tried to organize it efficiently um, at the beginning of the year, and we did meet with teachers to create the schedule and craft what we were going to be doing, but um, not so specifically. And then at the beginning of the year, we implemented a schedule like Tuesdays, MTSS days, you know, Wednesdays, leader and me, action team meeting days, and, um, and because it's been such a really stressful year. Teachers felt like they needed that time just to just to survive, honestly, to do the things they needed to do, contact parents, meet um, with each other. So we pulled back around, when did we pull back? January? End of October. Yeah, it was early. early. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that, we, that we changed our expectations. Yeah. We lessened the, re the requirements. Some stuff is still on the, on the table. Um, I think they really, appreciate the time to do the work, but they'd like to schedule some of it as they see fit. You know what I mean? Um, do the yeah, work. They don't want every not, afternoon scheduled for they them. They don't want every yeah. afternoon scheduled for them. Um, but, you know, when we said, you know, MTSS is required, Leader in Me is required because we're, you know, we are um, 
trying to implement that and we're, and we're spending some master funds on that so we felt that was important but the other time they had flexibility so if you have a team if you have a weekly team meeting scheduled if you don't need to meet don't meet use the time for planning or, or you know to, to prep for your for your classes so I think it's a balance to okay. be honest with you I think they appreciate it but they'd like more say in how it how it operates does that make sense I mean, there's never enough time to do the work. <laughs> Does that help? No, okay. so you, you mean like last, before the COVID, like all the teacher usually like just even after the contract, whatever they needed to do, they just voluntarily work, extra work, right? Correct. So, Uncon and right now you have a time for them to do yes. more. Okay. Some of the work. They still have to do work after. Right. And, well, I'm sure. <laughs> I just had a com conference yeah. with uh, one of the teacher after yeah. work. So. Yeah. Um, okay. I, is your plan is in the future going back into two forty five? That's the goal, or is it going to be like two thirty? That's that. We, like we'd like to make it around two thirty, just okay. like kind of a middle ground, so that they can still have a good solid chunk of time. Because honestly, when you say two thirty, if they're dismissing at two thirty, they're not going to be able to be in a meeting at at two thirty. It's going to take them. You know, they have to use the restroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which they don't typically yeah. do during the day. And um, part of providing that time too is that we, <clears throat> with the transition to the strategic plan, um, we were asking a lot for a lot of changes um, yeah. in how we operate, um, like specifically with the collaboration. And so um, there's a challenge of the boards and community asking for more collaboration, but then not actually giving the time for that to happen because it, the school day is so packed and there's not really chunks during the day for them to be able to do that. So it's, yeah. it's hard. It, it's As a, a parent. It's, it's, hard. Hard. It's, it's very hard. hard. Like I'm not, well, I'm well, not I don't know which one is easier. Like some schools, they do until 3 or until 50 and then once a week they have yeah, early right, days, right. you know, like so the teacher have big chunk of the time and I don't know what is work better or not for right. parents and yeah. also for teachers. Yeah. Um, Windsor did that prior to um, COVID for two years, I think. They tried a noon dismissal on Fridays, and there were some benefits and some drawbacks. Um, it, it tended to be people needed to be in multiple meetings at the same time. So on that day, they were scheduled, in, because there are a lot of different meetings that have to happen. Um, they found that that was, that was a challenge. I mean, Andrew, you experienced it mm -hmm. trying to meet with some of those teams. They yeah. would be here, there, and everywhere. You'd have um, partial, you know, people that you wanted there couldn't be there because they were elsewhere. And then if they're coaching, if they're coaching any um, sports activities, then they're leaving at 2.15. So that's a whole hour at the end of the day mm -hmm. that they're missing um, out. And that's just the way it is. Yeah. And I know well, Woodstock is doing two hours delay start they once just a do, month. Yeah. About once a month. Yep. Yeah. They have one month. Month. Yeah. Yeah. Um, How does that work? Um, how does it work? Um, I mean, <laughs> does it work well? Is this a scene? I, it's, it is meeting time. Yeah. It is not, like, there is no free time for us. Like, okay. we go, well, we have half an hour in the morning to, like, have our morning breakfast with everybody. But then um, we are using, um, her name is Katie Novak. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. She's Katie doing, Novak, yeah. Yep, yeah. she's doing, yep. Yeah. So she's doing, that's what she, we've been doing every okay. of those early starts for an hour and 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, okay. And so then we have like 10 minutes to use the restroom yeah. and then <laughs> our kids come flying in. So, yeah. I mean, it works. Yeah. It works. Um, again, like, the hardship of the parents and the other ones. But, you know, it's not, but there's no, it's not like specific, like there are meetings for certain things. It is just like just for that we are thing. all at the same yeah. time doing the same professional development. Right. And I think some people like that. And then we've got, you know, faculty meetings on Tuesdays, um, like every Tuesday, faculty or department meetings. After school. After school from 315 to 14. My school does a weekly at one forty five. Weekly dismissal. Yeah. 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 Thursday. So we'll put it I mean it's on our admin agenda to um, work through, but um, we need to make that decision pretty quickly. It sounds like it should probably I think it went to the SE board last year. 
correct? The yeah, because it's universal. It's on the agenda. Because it's a uniform yeah. schedule across yeah. all schools. Yeah, so we can't we can't do something different than any of the other schools, correct? So like if yeah, we say it's a master agreement, right? Got it. Right. Um, yeah, it's a master agreement. Yeah. So it was an SU board decision mm -hmm. or yeah. approval, I think, mm -hmm. last year. Yeah, it wasn't local. So if, if Windsor said 2.45, Windsor want to do 2.45, and then how does that work? Well, I think it would work um, administratively. The team would come up with a, 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 Between a decision, and then we'd bring it to the SU school board for okay. approval. Okay. And they could say yes or no. And if they said no, then we'd have to figure it out. Yeah. And that meeting's, I don't know when the next SU board meeting is. We, we just have one last week. Yeah, so it'll be three weeks. April 25th. Yeah. Right. So. Oh, yeah, because it was that last, sorry, it was the last week of April. Last yeah. Monday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's put it on the uh, trial board. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Um, we'll be, we'll thank keep you, you posted. Yes, yes. Thank you. No, thank you. Yes. Thank you for coming. Oh, yeah. Thank you have you. a first no, public. So nice. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Heather, <laughs> remind me. <laughs> I did. And I sent out. I sent out my emails to all like, my people and was like, "We have a school board meeting tonight." I'm good in because I'm going to write this totally off. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. That's no, our that's job. So we need public. We need public participation. We do. And I that's why we're here. You, so that's good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, that's what I need. It's up to you. Well, I'll say a listen a little bit, and then I might. You yeah, should do stay for the IDL presentation. Okay, there we go. Shows kind of what's going on. That's right. Yeah, yeah that's right. I love to hear that. Um, yeah. And as Christine gave that segue, uh, Tina, I think we're on to you. Unless I don't know who else is on the. Uh, that Sue Brown was on for a minute. Okay. Is it Christine? Are you on? Yeah. Okay, so it's you, Angie, and you know. Okay. Cool. Tina, do you want me to present? my screen or do you want to do that um why don't i present why don't i present because i can go through the let me stop sharing then and you can share your screen so for those of you that don't know I, i'll introduce tina yeah. okay. tina is our um she, she's just amazing she's our librarian slash um so we call her our STEAM coordinator, but she's helping to really implement the um, goals of the strategic plan in terms of integration and collaboration and student-driven learning. Student, um, we're really working towards student self-determined learning, so giving students voice and, and choice in what they're doing and how they're doing it. Um, so she's been instrumental. She, in her schedule, she has time with each of the grade levels during that collab time to meet and plan. Um, she has time during the week. She's kind of on a rotating schedule for the lower grades. And they're planning units. And then with the upper grades, um, a similar model, but she, um, it's harder to integrate at the upper levels when you have more core teachers involved. So it's a work in progress. But she's going to give an, a library update and talk about some of the things that the kids have been learning about. Okay, so when I'm presenting, um, I can't see all of you, so this is going to be tricky. Hold on. <laughs> um, so, Christine, you can just um, tell me if anybody has a question as I'm going would be helpful. Um, so this is the library and IDL update. I haven't been here for a while. The first screen um, is the HES IDL uh, units that we created this um, year. Hang on, I'm just going to let the dog out. Can you explain IDL? If anyone's watching it's this, it's interdisciplinary learning. That's what it stands for. Interdisciplinary learning. So, Christine, can you see all the units? Yes. Yep. Yep. Okay. So, one, one, by grade? these by are grade? by grade. It's, so, it's one through eight? One through eight. So, some of them, yep. seven, eight is one on the end. Oh, Oh, okay. It's K8. K8. Seven eight yeah. is on that end. Okay. Yeah. So T. It starts with T K K, and then first, second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. Seven eight. Um, so when you talk about the time after school for the collaboration time, these units are a direct result of those times. Um, it gives me time to meet with um, grade level teachers and develop those units, figure out the materials that we need. Um, and connect to the core curriculum that's going on within the classrooms um, on the rotations that I 
that I do. So that's sort of a, a really powerful um, map there to show you how much work we've actually done this year. Um, I did uh, an audit through um, Follett and just to kind of look at the collection of what we have. So 6% of the collection is newer than two, 2017. The average age of the collection is 2002. 99% um, of the collection is print, which um, we really need to address um, more of our audio learners. So that's a, a big task for me for next year. Um, and then I just broke it down by sort of the grade levels that you see um, where the books are allocated. In um, the other thing I looked at was circulation over the years. Okay, so um, YA is young adult, right? Correct. Yeah. So yep. is that more of a 912 or is it like a 512? It, it's more of a, I would categorize it as six through nine. Um, when we start getting in the nine through 12 literature, it some of it gets a little bit heavy. So I'm kind of, I almost want a YA plus section. <laughs> to be honest, because some kids are, are ready for it, but other kids are not, and having it read, readily available would, um, it would be tricky. Um, so I'm kind of looking to build the YA section for those kids that are ready, but being very conscious of the material that we're putting in. Yeah, and then, um, you know. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. That's helpful. Um, okay. Yeah, and that's actually a kind of a small percentage of what we have too, when I think about how many kids can probably access it. Um, and then, so um, do you have a gut reaction on the age of our collection? Um, I, I, do. <laughs> I ask this because I have no agenda. I have absolutely no idea what that yeah. means. Are so you when you, <laughs> yeah, we have books that are, we have books that are very old that need to be weeded out. Um, we have some that are multiple copies that need to come out. Um, we have some multiple copies that I just can't keep them on the shelves. They're so popular. And those are the newer books. So when you think about if you go back to the circulation, if I go back to the circulation, um, hang on, to the circulation one here, if you think about the age level of our books being about 2002 and you, and, you know, we go back in time when the books were more current, we were having more books circulated. Oh, so as the collection gets so as the collection gets older and it's not really something they want to read, they're not apt to take it out. Plus, we also went to a part-time librarian when it starts going down. Um, and then of course the, the lowest years are our COVID years, and the pink year at the end is the current year, and we're not done with this current year. So I'm feeling pretty good that we're at least on a upswing. <laughs> Yeah, that's heartening. Yeah, it is. Um, so I'm just going to move ahead with part of that work. Um, I had the seventh and eighth graders in the interdisciplinary unit um, work with me to do a diversity audit in the library. Um, and I'm just going to show you really quickly sort of what, let's see if it, this transfers onto the screen. Um, this is what they saw. Um, I presented why we were doing the assignment um, and talking about why it's important for everybody to be seen in our library. We talked about the Vermont School Association um, statement for intellectual freedom, saying that, you know, having present presentation in the library for all groups um, and cultures is important in order to understand a global society. Um, we looked at some informational graphics to kind of have a more visual representation for them to understand. Um, we talked about hashtag own voice books, which means um, having an author that has experienced what the book is about. So, you know, if you have a book about a, a Black person that a Black person has written the book, so their perspective is um, accurate. Um, we watched a video um, called Windows, Mirrors, and Doors, and I'll give you access to this because it's quite a long video, but it gives a, a perspective of an Asian author um, writing books and why it's in, it was important culturally for her. Um, we talked about um, where to get the 
um, books when we re re got the data um, collected. This is the data they collected. Um, so our diversity um, in the libraries. Can you make it bigger? Yeah, the slide. Can I, it make it? I can, hang on. Thanks. Thank you, I'm sorry to interrupt. That's okay. It's just really important data. Ah, yes, now we can see it. Thank you. <laughs> now you can see it. It's, it's quite, um, none of us were really surprised, but we it were- It very rural. We were pretty upset <laughs> by looking at this data. So the kids, what they were tasked to do. So this is just the cultures and groups that we looked at. And then we also took a look at gender representation within our library. Um, and this was also a bit upsetting because we do have um, representation across the board in our school. And we think it's important that they see themselves in the books as well, or for us to understand um, sort of what those characters are going through as well. So they were tasked to buy a book um, about a window mirrors and doors um, selection. They filled out a purchase form and then they um, they had to read the book and do a project, which they are currently working on the projects as we as we speak now. Um, I'm going to go back to the other presentation. Um, here we go. So this was them um, reading in the new lounge that I put together for them to read their diversity books. Um, we served snacks and cocoa for them to read. And even our younger students, you can see on the right, are enjoying the, the lounge as well to curl up with a book and read together. So it's been a very popular add-in this last week. Um, going back to the interdisciplinary units across the board, middle school did a gingerbread challenge. And this is just one of the ones. They had to connect it to some learning that they had done um, to that point in school, and then the school voted on their favorites. Um, we had a winter carnival led by the middle school, and that was a middle school um, student's idea to set up the carnival, so that was kind of fun. They did a great job, and we had some beautiful weather that week. Um, they did a shark tank with Mr. Butts, which I think somebody came and presented to you about their project. Yeah, um, these were some of the other projects that were done um, during that unit. Um, sixth grade is currently doing some toy hacking where um, in pairs they got two toys and they have to take them apart and combine them to make one toy. So we're in the process of creating new toys. Um, fifth grade is doing Hugo Cabaret and cardboard automation. So they're representing um, some takeaways from the book, and um, they had to make some portion of the project move. So we have a crank that is built on the left, I mean, on the right. And I think on the left-hand side is one that um, it actually turns. Fourth grade, we did solar ovens, and one staff member actually cooks with a solar oven. So he came in and talked to them about um, his experience. And then we um, tried boiling sap or at least trying to get it to um, a temperature that was higher than um, what it was currently when it came in. And they also tried um, cooking uh, chocolate chip cookies, which they got soft, but they didn't cook well. So our experience is to try that more more towards the summer months than in the, in the middle of the winter. But it was, <laughs> it was, it was worth a try and um, they enjoyed the unit. So they still have them and I think they're gonna try them again. Yeah, um, s'mores. s'mores is a lot easier. You just need to melt the chocolate and the marshmallow. Yeah. <laughs> oh, s'mores. Yeah. Just go for um, melting. In fourth grade, I'm also teaching them how to make book trailers. So I have one here that is in progress that I wanted to show you. Um, if I can get her just to pull up. We video is something that we have on our clever clever site. Um, so she read Dear Hank Williams, and so this is her book trailer. Can you turn it up, Tina? Is there sound? Yeah, can you turn it up? It's as high as I can get it.
Yeah, we can't hear it, Tina. Oh. So, um, I can't move this sound any higher, but I'm just going to play the end so that it's just music and then the, the language. She's not talking in the trailer. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so that just gives you an idea of the book trailers that you can put together with stock media. Not one. Um, third grade made maple popcorn bars. We talked about bioregionalism and what makes Vermont Vermont. So their um, their little designs on the um, outside had to do something with Vermont, and then they had to they had voice and choice of what ingredients went into the maple popcorn bars, and we made them up and they enjoyed them. And, and they sold the they did. <laughs> yes, Larry Dower came in and, and bought a couple of them, which made them very joyful. <laughs> um, second grade um, last week made some greenhouses um, and we read Anywhere Farm and we talked about what plants need in order to grow. So they'll be using those greenhouses after April vacation to begin their plant studies. And first grade, we did polar bear research and habitat creation. So we use Pebble Go. And Angie, if you're uh, really listening, we love Pebble Go. Um, and uh, um, having, yeah, having having Pebble Go has just been really um, great for the lower lower grades. Um, and TK, they were learning fairy tale elements, and so they designed puppets and a puppet show box to take home. And that is the end of the presentation. So, yeah. any questions for me? No, I'm just blown away. I just am so excited that this is what we're doing and this is what our kids are getting and it's just such a change and thank you. <laughs> yeah, you're the best, Tina. <laughs> yeah, it, but you know, it really, it really um, is telling of the after school time and the ability to meet with the teachers and to, to, to work with them to make these really rich units. And I think that the programs will grow across if we can keep that time. So just being on the teacher side, keeping that time for us to collaborate and to keep growing so that like the art component can come in and those things, you know, it's baby steps. It's, you know, go slow to go fast. It's I think what we heard at the beginning of the school year. So um, I just feel really proud of all the teachers work. And, and the kids are really excited about the units too. So yeah, that's all I have for you this week, this time through. I have a question. So, um, so you've been working on this now, what it's April. So I'm wondering, and <laughs> collateral damage is not the right word, but like, it's like, what's the collateral, what's the impact in the classroom? I know that often a big um, barrier for teachers to do this kind of work on their own with students is because they think it's going to take up a lot of time and they have to be engaged in direct instruction. Have you noticed any teachers, like the impact on teachers in terms of when you're working on the working with them, I think that gives them a lot of safety to have someone there to help them. And I'm just wondering what you've observed so far in terms of the impact on teachers on individual practices and willing to risk to do this kind of work on their own. Really, really good question. And yes, I have started seeing um, teachers. So on the days that I'm not meeting with them, um, they'll come in and just say, do you have five minutes? Do you have 10 minutes? What do you think of this? Do you have a hot glue gun? Do you have this? And so when you think about my budget being what it is, I am also supporting 
work within the classrooms. And again, it's slowly growing. Um, so it's a good thing that they're, you know, like I'm getting more emails. Of course, I was only in library for like a year before we went or even half a year before we went COVID. So, but what I'm starting to see is emails of, I'm going to do this unit. Can you pull me some books or, um, you know, so it, it's really, I think beginning and taking hold, um, I'll be teaching classes and other teachers will just pop in to see what the other classes are doing because it's kind of exciting. They see these greenhouses going down the hall and like, what? That, you know, why can't we? And so it, it just sparks those conversations. Um, you know, I'm I'm torn in that I think K-5 could use more of my time, but I'm I'm spread, you know, um, so it, it the scheduling piece is hard and wanting to be in all places at the, all the time. So I think by encouraging the teachers to slowly do more of, of that within the classroom, it's it's going to happen. Do you consider yourself a mentor for your um, colleagues? Uh, I would say yes. I, I think that especially with the research components and the fact that I have resources that they don't have you know it's hard when you have like your 200 dollars budget for classroom supplies and then you're only this for science and this for so when when you start adding in the i need marbles and i need velcro and you know it, you would be amazed at how many times i get requested for velcro yeah. what is that? um pipe cleaners just any of those little things i know like leprechaun traps was a huge one and you know I let out a lot of popsicle sticks and those kinds of things because our ordering system takes so long. And when you're like on a Tuesday thinking this child has come up with something we want to do, but I can't go out and buy the materials. So they come to me. So, I mean, I think the whole thing is a win-win. Great. Right. Thank I think you. The, I think the library in itself has become a, a pocket and central place, which makes my heart feel really good. Really nice. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, you should be really proud. It's been amazing. I have a question. I love the audit stuff that you did, and what what are we going to do about that? Yeah. <laughs> I am <laughs> the plan. So, that's a great question. Um, I because all the seventh and eighth grade students, I had um, applied for a diversity grant through the Byrne Foundation. So each oh, child received $20 to buy a book addressing the diversity issues. So the books that they ordered um, are now in, will be in the library. And my work um, in helping them find sites, I, I found some really great sites on like social justice and a few other sites that address, you know, and they're very helpful in finding good books. <laughs> written right. by own authors um, to get for the library. And then, you know, I think my plan would be after I kind of get more of those books is to redo an audit, maybe maybe not next year, but within another year to, to have like a before and after snapshot. It's gonna take some work. I mean, those are pretty yeah. significant gaps. Um, so it's well, ongoing isn't working. library cleanup kind of a big project too, or yes. I mean, Please throw away old stuff. Yeah, I think. Um, I think, but I'm I getting around to my, doing it, I think, can be a thing. Yeah, I put in my schedule for next year, and you know, Christine has seen my draft schedule um, for a little bit more library administration time as well to kind of address the the weeding out of some of the materials that are older and you know. Um, most encyclopedias where nobody picks up an encyclopedia anymore. It's more of um, let's get online kind of thing. So I, I want to invest that time in actually teaching sixth, seventh, and eighth graders what sources to look at. You know, Wikipedia is not, it's a great place to start, but it's, it's not academic research. So just kind of helping, helping them using more of the tech tools that we have available and weeding out the older stuff. So I'm, I'm going to take a step backwards because I have, as you know, a seventh grader reading a book. So you're telling me that he picked out the book that he's reading? Yes. Yes. I, so, that's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> that is unbelievable. And I mean, they had to order. I know. I didn't realize, like, he yeah. didn't explain to me that he picked it out. 
and mm -hmm. wow, you really pushed them completely so out great. of their comfort zone. Love it. I like, did. Really but well, out of their comfort zone. <laughs> I asked them. So here was the deal, because I know that some people, there, there can be pushback on that. And I didn't want to force anybody to read something they didn't want to read. So what I said was, you need to find a window, a door, or a mirror to read about. And that's sort of all I said. I said, look, so I showed them the data. And I said, okay, so where are the areas do you think we need to have representation? So they chose the books that they wanted to read. And I had to okay it within, you know, sort of the grade level um, at a grade levels that we represent within our library because there are some books that are just a little bit too old, have you know a little bit content that you need to have real discussions with with the books um, I, I didn't realize that part and that is huge like i really feel like i mean maybe not all students but you certainly pushed my student in a direction that i would not have i didn't know. actually had a really great discussion with him about his book <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's been telling me about it a little bit too, and I had no idea that he picked it out. So that's, yeah. that's cool. Huge, huge. I like it. Pretty awesome. I have to tell you that. Yeah. Um, so, in terms of the strategic plan and getting to, I mean, Tina's been amazing at implementing this and helping teachers become more comfortable um, and collaborating with them. And, um, you know, we've been in, well, Angie and I have been in these Friday. First Friday, I don't know why they're called First Friday. They're like the last Friday. They were first Friday, Friday. Uh, the last year. Yeah, with Mike Nicholson. Remember the consultant that oh, we yeah. with for mm -hmm. portrait of graduate oh, and still strategic plan. And Angie and I took a little trip down to a school district um, earlier in the year in, in Virginia November. in November to see kind of how they're implementing this. Um, it's really a transformation of how we. Yeah. of education how we do things yeah uh, but we still meet remotely with mike and other teachers from around the country once a month and they are um we talk about what self-determined learning really is and how you can create that in a school mm -hmm. um so i was chatting with tina about it i'm like what if we just did an elective like <laughs> full on self-determined learning they, they and and tina is like I'll do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> That'd be awesome. I, yeah, so we're, yeah. we're talking about how to craft that in the schedule, and she's, um, I mean, talk about taking risks. I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. So That's I, we appreciate her and all that she does for our kids and our teachers and our community. Yeah, and I, I have to say that I'm, like, as we're talking about all of this, I'm thinking of budget mm -hmm. and wanting to duplicate Tina. And I don't think, <laughs> I don't think that's humanly possible. So, I like, I wonder, I mean, I, and I know we've already crafted the budget for next year, but, like, is there a half of a position that we can put in there to be there, to be directed by Tina, um, mm. you know, and have it not be, just to have a, the right hire, to be directed by Tina and to be the person that, you know, if a teacher comes in, I need glue, like they're there so that Tina's brain can stay within the current um, staffing? Um, well, we, I don't know. We have to we, talk. We, <laughs> this, I'm yeah. throwing it out there now. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Um, I think eventually, can I, can I, yeah. I think eventually, um, I mean, yes, I wouldn't say no to that, but I think that. <laughs> The, what I see is a, a huge need and where I fall short is in the sort of six, seven, eight range and thinking about sort of the what I can't do. I can't do design tech. I'm not licensed to do design tech. And a lot of um, sort of uh, a group of students, you know, would really benefit from more of the hands on building aspect. Yep. And I, you know, we used to have design tech where they would build with um, wood and do all of those things. But, you know, I, like I said, I'm not licensed for that. It's a specific license through the state. And I, my career of going back to school is kind of like, I'm, I think I've, <laughs> I've hit my limit. And I, I get my, I'm, I, I'm happy where I am. And I think being very successful where I am. So I like to stay there. But I think if a, a future hire were to happen, that would be a very good direction, I think, for the students and, you know, for you to consider. I don't know where yeah. we would put it, but. Yeah, and that's more of a programmatic. Yeah, I mean, uh, 
but it also makes me think like I think about like we're getting this new trail system right. of like I end up going in the other end of like if we're going to be investing thousands of dollars into an accessible trail we really need to make sure every staff is out there mm -hmm. as much as possible so how can we also encourage them at the same time to be using their outdoor space feeling comfortable in the outdoor yeah. space because yeah. kindergarten is great but every year it goes up and they get more yes. and more right. yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. What I was getting at with my question about if she, Tina considers herself a mentor is um, how she has made this type of learning accessible for teachers because she's supported them, which is what an instructional coach does. And that's, I have a vision of instructional coaches in all of the buildings because it's job embedded professional learning. And that's what she's doing just by spreading her love for this type of learning. Yeah. And that, I, that's what I want us to be thinking about. How we mm -hmm. support teachers to do this incredible way of ha having kids learn, but it's it takes a lot of risk. It's not what you grew up doing. It's not yeah. Yeah. what you learned how to do in school, and it takes a lot of risk. And um, knowing your curriculum in a way so that you can adapt it, so you're you're doing giving kids what they need, but also helping them figure out what they need on their own. Yeah. So it's a balance. Yeah. And, I, and I think a big, big part also is that the teachers come with them. Do you know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not a special. <laughs> I'm not. Do you know what I mean? The, the, the teachers come with them and they're involved. And it, it's because then the kids are starting to see what I'm doing in class and what we're learning in class is directly related to this extension of what we're doing. Um, and so that engineering piece in the brainstorming and, and design process really works. And then they bring that problem solving back into the classroom. So, um, you know, it's just hopeful that the that it will keep growing and, the, and that it will keep having success. So anyway, I'm going to go and eat my pizza. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Good night. Bye. Bye. Um, it, it, knowing that we're saying goodbye to Tina, but um, yeah, I, I'd still love to see if we could get extra manpower in the library. Yeah, yeah. and even if it's a split position mm -hmm. somewhere else, I mean, I know you have you don't have manpower where everywhere you need it, but you know, it's just how we use our resources. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and she's been great. Um, I think um, you know we've and as she space is an issue in this building, right? Right. We're running out of it. Um, I, yeah. I even heard. though our, our enrollment is declining, although 31 kindergartners. Ooh. <gasps> oh, 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 I was hoping it was going to be less because one of those is mine. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we're in the 30s again. That's more than we've had in years. That's more than we've had in years. Yeah, it's really good news. Um, <laughs> Get ready for mine. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. We love them all. We love them all. Um, uh, there may be um, a way to house Miss Barrett in there. She's oh, a yeah. support staff member, yeah. primarily middle level, but that might be a yeah a way we can give Tina some extra support too. Yeah, so, just like yeah, and somebody that she could direct to. I don't have time to do this right now. Like and Ray is like the yeah. collection, the checkout, all that exactly. stuff. Exactly, she, she's really loves that. first stat. She loves it. Yeah. Yeah, so, that that so. sounds. Brilliant. But I would say, like, yeah, how can we, though, push yeah. the outsides? Yes, popsicle sticks and pipe cleaners are great, but, like, get outside and use the natural objects that are there yep. for your design builds, and, and how can we push that a little bit more? Yeah. yeah. Um, because I think that's, it would just be a shame to invest in the property as well and not, I mean, really everybody should be out. It. I'm yeah. hoping that that investment pulls them out there. But. But, it, it, but if you're not comfortable to teach right. out there, I mean, I'm seeing right. this daily in the work I'm doing right now. I mean, I have to, like, I'm still dragging, you know, s mm -hmm. people out there mm -hmm. because it's like, well, it also, it doesn't fit in my 45-minute ELA right. block. It doesn't fit in my whatever block. And it's right. like, we need to blow up the blocks right? because, no, it's, you're right, it's not going to fit there, so just, like, stop that. Right. And so really trying to think beyond those that kind of scheduling to try to move things and right. try to flex things. And if it means also, because I, I think part of that flexibility is looking at the specials and saying, okay, if we're gonna do outdoor ed, we're gonna do all these other other mm -hmm. things with, you know, independent learning, how can we 
how are we engaging our specials in, in all of those? Because it is, it's like almost doing a disservice of like sending the kids off, oh, you're gonna do and do music and it fits in your music thing. Mm -hmm. Whereas why are, why is it not part of the independent learning? Right, you know, yeah. Yeah. scheme and stuff. Yeah. But, yeah. but then I know teachers also <laughs> need a break sometime during the day. <laughs> oh, they do. It's a balance, right? Yeah. It's a balance. Yeah. 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 And, and yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Like, that library oh, time was always a time for our teachers yeah. to go do something else. Yeah. Breathe. <laughs> well, Breathe. They, get, they get their contracted prep time, and then they have their end of the day collab yeah. time, which, yeah. which really helps. So, um, yeah. Yeah, but we're moving in the right direction. We Absolutely. are. This is like, really I mean, fun. just from four years ago, this is major change. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is awesome. Yeah. Okay. I think the community needs to know more about this because I feel like, you know, I, I know what my second grader brings home, but like, mm -hmm. I have no idea what else, you know, like yeah. what your son is doing. And yeah. so, like, and I think, I think a big community push would be something that would be interesting. So, for like, having you know people like when we had the COVID and we did the big donations and stuff like that like I know that like I would be more than happy to like donate a lot of money that goes like to buying multicultural books mm -hmm. and like things like that and I'm sure there's plenty of other people who would want to donate like their time to like help with outdoor classrooms sure. and you know help students come up with ideas of like what to do with the land space because like that's something we're doing in our school right now is like what are students doing like because if kids have buy-in they'll do it yeah, and they'll right. they'll yeah. want to do it so if we can make it like so what do you want to do out in the outdoor space kids will be like well here's what I want to do and teachers are like okay let's do it yeah. so I think sort of like getting kids to say what they want to do and having you know like community be like well I can help with that um I I'm a big fan of that so yeah, no, yeah, there's so many experts in our community. They, yeah. We do. Yeah. We have a lot, and we've yeah. got we got a lot of like, like we should be making a sugar shack, mm -hmm. you know, like <laughs> we should be getting kids to tap maple trees, yeah. and like they should be out there doing all of that. Like, yeah, we've got. We are making a composting. Of I saw that. Ruby was telling me all about the composting. <laughs> yeah. But like, I mean, we've got we do. We've got like this community of like lots of yeah. people who are willing to help. I mean, you got a goat farm right there. Like, mm -hmm. I'm sure. We could come up with 80 million things that the community could do to like help with the school or just be part of the school. Like it's exciting to be talking about having the community. In whole, the I know. well, I mean, like, is our motto yeah. whole community? Uh, so yeah. like, yes. let's just like just not during. Panel. Let's yeah. right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah. Exactly. But we're we're here now. Yeah. So like, yeah. we should be we should be really reaching out whole community to be like, we got the space. What do you want to do with it? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. how can we help? Yeah, um, just an update on that. Jennifer Waite has been helping with the with the trail, with the trail or getting yeah the grant, and um, we're going to have to raise about twenty thousand dollars more okay. to pay for it because the prices have. Yeah, that's, that's actually not quite as much as I was thinking. Yeah, exactly. I know yeah, that's, that's actually like, like okay, yeah, we can do that. Yeah. yeah. So um, I think there she was going to talk to Dave Ormiston about. Um, some other federal pots to try to pull from to see okay. if we can get it. If not, we're gonna have to do some work, raise the money. Mm -hmm. So, so yes, um, definitely need to get the community in any community. Community, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we have one more community dinner scheduled in the spring, I do believe, and it potentially could be an in in person, which would be great, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. The the that would be a great time to like showcase all the kids yeah. things like yeah that's one thing you know we need to do is showcase mm -hmm. like showcase what's right. going on yeah. well and having people in the building is a huge mm -hmm. part yes. of that right. <laughs> it is but i mean like not even just parents knowing but like community the oh, whole yeah. community yeah. should right. know like what's going on and like right. what's yeah. happening at school yeah so. yeah yep um okay okay so i think we're on to the principal report yeah, not my report <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we pulled it all out into yeah. items for discussion, so. <laughs> uh, let me share my screen. It is short tonight, actually, because. Um, That's okay. I didn't say this, but I'm like aiming for a record meeting. All right, let's do this. Uh, <laughs> April 22. It is, it is short. I know, and David's is short, too, so. Yeah, I haven't slept in like a week, so. Uh, <laughs> Hockey's over. What are you doing? 
to continue next year yeah so anything I have to do with it it will so yeah um, so, so the state bill it has got it's basically an education committee at the state level for universal meals they are saying they actually moved it because originally it was just breakfast that they were looking at they you know, upped it to breakfast and lunch for next That's year they for students so yeah, for students. For students. That, that hasn't passed yet right no so okay. what they are basically what they're proposing is to have a year because they're trying to figure out how to fund it because they don't mm -hmm. want to just put, give it to the towns like right. that's not really fair. Right. So they are looking at funding it through the education fund for the next year, okay. and then so that will give them a year to figure it to out. figure it out basically. So that's what that's what's going forward right now. So, but idea. then the teachers. This is funded through ESSER. This is the this staff is, wellness okay. pool um, that we set aside. To or I mean, it could be low local funds. It depending on how it, it but it would be could be covered by ESSER because there's staff wellness funds yeah. in the or mental health funds right. in the ESSER yeah I heard unsolicited from a teacher in Windsor um, that this was game-changing yeah um, that, that it just made her feel really appreciated and the yeah. food was amazing and so and they just get to go and get as much as they want yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And she just like blurted it out yeah. to a whole room of hockey players. Yeah. Like, it was just really And it's nice yeah. it's nice yeah. to go down there when they're down there. I mean food makes people smile, right? It's yeah. Nice. Good food makes people <laughs> smile. Yeah, good food. That's the key. Because I don't know that this would have been yeah. the same a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, no, no, I'm not doing there. Sure. <laughs> so it's been um, it's been great. So much awesome. I just wanted to share that with you. Yeah, um, we should um I, I mean I would like to find a way to keep the yeah. That's not just we can. Okay. Um, but knowing that it does cost money, <laughs> it does. It yeah. does. But it's worth it. It's worth the investment, right? You want you want teachers that are happy. It makes them and well fed teachers. Well, are happy. it's also like if they're thinking their lunch is great, then they'll go buy lunch the other days too. Right. right. The program. That's so. true. Exactly. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. And don't want angry teachers. No, we want calm, happy teachers. Grace. So at least we know that all translates into the children. Into the children. <laughs> it's really all staff, right? Not just teachers. It's all staff. Yeah, yeah, all staff. Good. So it's wonderful. Yeah. Um, so uh, hiring updates. We have completed interviews for the second and third grade interviews. Um, yeah. You are. Okay. We have to move. We have to move. I know. Um, so we have um, our current TK teacher, Megan O'Brien applied um, she was in that's an SU position so she applied for that second grade position and the team moved her forward um, she comes well we know her um, she's amazing she's been teaching I think she's roughly been teaching around eight years uh, she studied at the University of New Hampshire she's got a master's degree she's she's really um, gonna be great so she's gonna move to second which of course opened up TK Hiring, which we're interviewing for. We've interviewed one. We have another interview tomorrow. Um, Katie and I are spearheading that together. Um, our third grade position, as you know, our fifth, sixth grade configuration with, um, yeah, it, it, it's, that position is the halftime intervention that we had with what was um, uh, approved by the board. It, it just end, ends up being a third grade teacher. Um, her name is Megan McCarthy. She is currently um, teaching in uh, oh, um, BMW, West Springfield. No, I'm gonna forget what it's called. West um, Westminster. 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 Yeah. Yep. Um, small school. Yeah, it's really cool. And she comes to us with seven years' experience. So good, you know, oh, nice. experienced teachers. Yeah. And she is very, very excited to become part of the Hartford community and family. Nice. 
um, yeah, she's coming to visit after break and spending the day here. Her break is tonight with us. Yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's. Uh, we're very excited about both of those um, positions being filled with such um, qualified teachers. Yeah, um, that's great. And both so, people named Megan. Yeah, and they're both. Well, one goes by Megan. Oh. Which one is Megan? Third grade. Megan Third. McCarthy. Okay. Megan O'Brien. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's going to take a while. <laughs> <laughs> like a, a line over the... Yeah, yeah, I know. Megan. Could you please? Or <laughs> double E. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're going to work on that. Make it very pale. Yeah. So what's what's with the middle school? Yeah, what's so what's middle school? school? Well, Shakedown. <laughs> um, so we are... Uh, it's an anticipated middle level science position. Our teacher that um, came out from out west back home um, she lives in Lebanon, and there was an opening in Lebanon, and she went for it. So she's going to be um, teaching there. So we have a middle-level science position open. Posted it. We interviewed one. We have two more. An interview tomorrow and one Thursday. Um, so we'll. I, I think we'll fill that one. Um, and then our middle-level teacher is moving um, to a high school position. Which is what she's been wanting. Okay. Um, so we have that level ELA, our middle yeah, level ELA. ELA teacher. Okay. So that one's posted. Uh, we have how many applicants yet? But we have one interview scheduled like Thursday night. Okay. Um, but Matt is staying close. That you know. Of. I don't know. <laughs> Fingers crossed. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So math and social studies are solid. Well, the contracts are issued April fifteenth. So we'll know oh, soon. Right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, um, it was we had a couple new people on the team this year, and um, we are pushing our middle school teachers to collaborate, and that's that's a change. And some people like that, some people don't. Yeah, I'll just put it like that. <laughs> it's hard. I got a fabulous student teacher who teaches for math, so she'll be looking for a job. Okay, she's great. Right. We hope to. Keep I hope we, we don't hope, need math. We hope we don't need math. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I hope we don't need social studies either. Yeah. yeah, they're great. They're all a great, yeah. great group of teachers. So. Yeah, um, the things that I've heard about from social studies are awesome. Yeah, nice. Yeah, like, Mr. Anderson's great. Yeah, it's fun. He makes learning very engaging. And memorable, like mm -hmm. it's sticking because yeah. it's fun and it's fun. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty yeah. cool. So. Um, so I'll keep you posted, but okay. um, those are the, and I think you have to officially approve those hires. Oh, or so those are like legit. We're doing that right now. We could do that tonight. Okay, I can think about it. That would, yeah, should we yeah. put that on our like how your like how does your interview process work? Like who is on the interviewing team when you go and interview somebody? Teachers. Just okay. Oh, yeah, for interviewing teachers. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> uh, typically, I put it out there, and usually it's the grade level pod that is involved, um, special educators, assistant principal, um, support staff can be if they choose to be. Um, you are. I, yeah, I am. <laughs> I am. Um, we haven't had students. I was going to say, with the middle school, would middle you? Middle school, we should have you students should. on that committee. You yeah. should. Yeah. Um, we, we have not, but it is. Get. We should do that. Get two. Get two kids on there. Um, and that's the process. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. I'll uh, put, um, I put them under items for action. Okay, thanks, Nikki. And then I just wanted to update you on where we're at with Floral Hall because oh, we are considering yeah. same picture as last time. Um, moving our CrossFit out there. Um, Jim has met with Visbit, the insurance company. He now has that's to meet with a. That's the one that's like yeah, it's about to okay. get that back. Like, okay. It's pretty much full of stuff right now. Storage. It used to be fair, fair part of the fair, I think. Yeah, <coughs> this was a fairgrounds. Um, so there's still fair stuff in there? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, well, there's a Ferris wheel in there. Since that's like 50 years. years. Yeah, 60 yeah. years now. There years needs to be, it needs to be cleaned out anyway. Um, so he has, um, he has to get approved from fire to safety. Oh. Whether we have to sprinkle it or not. And mm. if we have to sprinkle mm. it, it'll probably not happen, but, um, what should happen. It should actually happen. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, but, um, and it has to have two entry 
and exit. Oh, and it's that's the only one. That's the only one at this point. Um, so yeah, he's going to let me know, and it has to be structurally sound. And there's would be good, especially if we're jumping around. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so he's working on it. He doesn't know Sounds quite good. yet. Um, but there are different rules around like how much the space is occupied. If it's not full occupied full time, then the rules are a little bit different. So mm -hmm. yeah, we really are hoping to move CrossFit out there. But we'll see. I've spent a little time in the floral hall recently. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been in there. Oh, I've never been in there. Um, place. there's a lot of stuff for theater sets. And I'm wondering if there's any question about it, about storage for theater for the drama club going for I mean, I know we're not there there yet, but I know there's a bunch of stuff in there that they count on from year to year. There's a bunch of stuff in there that probably needs to just be tossed, but uh, no, for the not theater yet. stuff. How much space do you think it is? <laughs> What's well, that? I mean, I think what there's what they tend to save is flat mostly. They're just kind of big pieces of board that are they can paint on and use as backdrops. Um, which may make it a little bit easier to find a place for. There's also like the, I don't know, things they build that they think they might use the next time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's been 10 years now. Yeah. yeah. No, that we have not, we haven't gotten great. there yet. But if we. There's are, a torture it, chair in there from Adam's family. <laughs> things like that. <laughs> no, we we can auction that off. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's very fun. <laughs> I will keep you posted because it will probably cost a little bit of money sure. to yeah. get it ready. So, um, okay, just a couple of other bulleted things that I want you to be aware of. We are starting to think of end of the year activities. Graduation, you know, the date is the 15th at um, 4 o'clock. So Wednesday afternoon, we're going to plan to be outside if the weather permits. We really enjoy being outside, but working on a better sound setup so that the wind is... Yeah, did we get any progress with that? Um, we, I talked to Jim and Joe, and if we orient a different way, we could actually plug in. I mean, mm. it would, yeah, if we, oh, yeah. So we may do that because we have a couple of eighth graders who actually want to sing and play the guitar. Mm. The sound needs to be, yeah, Much amazing. better than yeah. last year. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Oh, that's already in my phone. Yeah, that's good. So what day is it? The 15th. Um, the 15th at 4, 4 o'clock. Is it Sunday? Sunday. No, it's Thursday. Thursday. I think it's a Wednesday. Okay, so it's June. June. Oh, oh yeah. it's Wednesday. Yeah, June. June. And June board 15th. members do go. Okay. I'm, we have front row seating. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Do we have fancy I'm, caps and gowns? No, we don't. <laughs> I, I just used to wear mine. Because I have one, right? So I'll have you to. Could. You could wear it. Yeah. I do not. <laughs> yeah. Maybe I can let you borrow. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's um, planning that um, step up day schedules. We're starting to think about for next year. Um, we are going to do an eighth grade trip so Alyssa's going to start doing a little bit of fundraising just starting by um, really asking the community for anybody that wants to donate because we haven't been able to fundraise for two years right where are they do. where do they go is this a they are going she is working on um, some options for them and they they'll choose the okay. candidate to choose so it's a fun trip at the end of the year they often are they've been to um, Six Flags they've been to JP because they've been to They've done a camping overnight at uh, Lake George. Um, this will be a day trip. Um, How many eighth graders are there? Uh, Thirty. Sounds about right. Yeah, uh, roughly. Okay. Um, I was just looking at it yeah. the other day. Yeah. Um, teachers are yeah, mostly finished. Some are still doing some conferencing with parents. Um, I was looking at the data. I have them share how many conferences they engaged in it looks like um, spring is always less than the fall um, younger is always more um, participants than as the kids get older and that that data is trending still the same way um, but they're important and, and really um, you learn a lot from parent teacher conferences so. do we know why like do we know why parents are not taking part in like parent teacher conferences because like I was shocked to see like because we could see who was doing it and I was like I counted I'm like that's not even close to 13 
kids, and that's in second grade, mm -hmm. who like didn't sign up for conferences, and I was like, this is crazy, like what's going on? Do we know why parents are not signing up? Like, is there? Um, sometimes, uh, you know, I know that there's more consistent communication with families along the way, so those mm -hmm. parents may not feel like they need to conference with the teacher because they're in direct contact frequently. Yeah. Um, there's some of that. There's some parents that it's just hard to engage with. Yeah. They just don't. Some parents are still traumatized from their <coughs> school experience. School experience. Yeah. I'd say the scheduling isn't always conference. the easiest. It's always during business hours still. Scheduling is always yeah. easy. Yeah. I mean, they were remote. Remote easier, but it's counts, still like a, but it's, it's still, still in the middle of the work day. You know, like it's not an easy we, we do parent teacher conferences from like 3 30 to 7. Mm -hmm. um, and that might be something they you know, typically do. Most that. teachers offer, um, they, I mean, uh, if my, every teacher has always been flexible yeah. that I've ever asked yeah. for yeah. like a yeah. different time, but just to, I yeah. also think there's, um, for those of us parents that need frequent reminders, um, yeah. there's some inconsistencies in the number of reminders. <laughs> they're, they're kind of, yeah, across the board. Um, so, like yeah. some years I've gotten five reminders, and by the third I'm like, I'm on it! And some years I've gotten one, and one. my kid's like, have you signed up? I'm like, no. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, when, what, when, how long ago do I have to look at my emails? That would would parent teacher conferences ever change to student led conferences, which then they are push, student led. They, they are. should be student led. As the kids get older, they're more student led. Okay. So because that might be something yeah. that like, I mean, if I knew my kid was leading a conference, I would go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was definitely before COVID. We were doing yeah, it was more of that. Yeah, and mine was student led this year. Okay. Was yours bad? No, not so much. And yours wasn't. Okay. So the intent is they're st they're more student led, okay. especially the older they get. Um, and it sounds like we need to talk about that a little bit more for the future. Um, so last June day, June seventeenth, new release. Uh, we did the school wide plan, which is t the title requirement for the federal funds that we get for Title One. Angie, myself. And our interventionist and Lindsay were the only people <laughs> present. <laughs> the recording will go up on the um, curriculum website on the federal grants page, probably in the next couple weeks. Um, I, but we would typically do that in the fall. And Christine's team's idea is to have it incorporated with your open house, open house oh, which is yeah. makes yeah. sense. And then they will. The teams, the teacher teams will look at their data in May and they will look at the plan and evaluate what they've done so far. I mean, but mostly it's just intervention, how we are, how we get kids into intervention and then how we support them and how we know whether or not our intervention is, is doing what we want it to do. And so they'll evaluate it and tweak the plan and then that would be the recommendation for the plan in the fall. And then that'll be how it's presented during open house, so it'll be much easier. So this is my fifth year as grants manage, manager, and um, I've never written a school-wide plan <laughs> until this year. <laughs> and we're supposed to have one every year. <laughs> so and we did it, and it got rejected. We had to revise yeah, it. <laughs> yeah, we did it, and we learned a lot because you know you learn by doing. We learned it because we've never done it before, so right. we learned. Yeah. And and we did a and, and so, the interventionist helped craft the presentation yeah. and present it and. That was a good learning experience for them as well. So it was good. So it'll be on the website if you're interested in watching it at some point. Um, K and TK registration, May 20th at HES. Um, 31 kids, very excited. Those schedules should be coming out okay. relatively Wait, soon. Wait, I already <coughs> registered. You're gonna, you didn't register for a time to come. And oh, no, no, soon. okay, I was that, like, that'll come. got it, okay. okay. That'll come soon. Um, so our summer academy is in process of being planned and um, organized. We have 78 kids that qualified with our winter TMP scores. Okay. And then teachers had the opportunity to also recommend some kids that maybe didn't qualify. Okay. Um, they're going to look at the spring data again just to make sure we're catching all the kids that would benefit. Um, we had hardly had the most kids last year, I think. Participate or recommended? Participate. 
We had like 38 kids participate last year. Wow. Yeah. And it's great. Have those, you, you said those those notifications already went out. They did. Mm -hmm. I should have had a letter. From mm who? -hmm. They were mailed by the office. And what qualified? If you're oh, in no. the mail, yeah, yeah, if your child qualified. What makes, you, like, how does your child qualify? If you are in the um, yellow and red in DMV, which is there, you're not making the step, not meeting the standard, below standard, or significantly below standard. So that's the criteria, the baseline that they used. But then there was also kids that were the teachers just were recommending yeah. as well, just yeah. maybe yeah. the test was not a good right good measure. measure. It's a, it's a how special. long is yeah. Summer Academy? It's going to be four weeks. Oh, whoa. 830 to 1130. Student day, right? I'm trying to get this right. July gonna, 11th through August. July, yes, yeah, after the 4th. Like um, and I believe it's five days again. Yeah. Yes. It was, do believe it was quite school successful school. last year. Mm -hmm. um, and it was at, at Windsor, though, right? At Windsor, yeah. 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 And it will be at Windsor just because we have to um, centralize our resources. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, the 11th through the 5th. Right. And um, just uh, student council, just so you know, they're planning an end of the year talent show, which is exciting. They're very excited about it. Um, is that kids or the kids? teachers? Yeah. Well, teachers can enter. Uh -huh. They want to show talent, but um, the kids are planning it. They're doing all the work, which is great. Um, and then you, uh, you know, what I didn't put in here is the play will be May twentieth. Everybody knows that, right? Yes. May twenty. Yeah. Is it? It's two days, right? It's two oh, days. Yes, it's Friday, Friday night, Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Saturday seven, and, and then I think Saturday, Saturday's two and, two and seven o'clock showings. Okay. So and that's T. Silas's birthday. Silas's birthday. Kindergarten uh, registration is on. Yeah. 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 Can't wait. All right. All right. So, do you want to share your screen? Yeah, you I have. Share? David prepared some slides for me to share with you. Awesome. So now we're done with the principal's report and moving on to the superintendent's report. Yeah. Mm hmm Hala, I'm excited you joined us. For I'm very interested. I've been learning so many things today. So, Kana, next time, bring a friend. That's how, that's how school birds work. Everyone, like, if you come now, next time you come and you bring yeah. a friend. We're going to fill the seats. We never go anywhere. We really? never. So never. No, we don't. It's supposed to say superintendent's report. I don't know where that text went. Maybe it's one of those surprise flybys if you click on it. Oh, maybe oh, just, oh, 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 yeah, David started adding those. And I was like, oh, yeah. no. I added the heart lead. Um, all right. So um, he talked a little bit about COVID. Did you say, you didn't say COVID is anything. No, that's on the list. That's going to tell me. So I won't, I, I took that bullet out. Um, he He's been talking about this equity audit and that, I mean, there are now 10 vendors. Wow. Proposals due the 15th. Um, uh oh. I got it. And, and uh, I can touch it. I can touch it. Oh, no, I'm going to touch it. Too. I just <laughs> she needs to get it. I need to move. <laughs> so it looks like he, him, uh, David, the superintendent from Springfield, and two board members from each district will be part of that initial process for, um, I think, determining or accepting the RFP. I, I'm not completely clear on that process, but I think that's how it would go. Um, the master agreements are all signed. Yay! Ooh. Contracts go out on the 15th. At will contracts are already sent out. And a shout out to Tina um, for doing a great job getting that done while she's still training her assistant. So mm -hmm. that was a big, huge task. Tina. <laughs> Another Tina. Tina that we bow to. <laughs> right. um, she's spelled differently. <laughs> yes, spelled it differently. is. She's also put some great um, systems in place for us. Nice. When you know for onboarding and for oh, no. um, contract changes. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So because it's, it's about communicating. And we just went to that time a new timesheet system. Yeah. So she, HR had been busy. Yeah. You got a lot going time, on. Time sheet cards. Yay! Yeah! Finally. Yeah! Finally! Finally. Finally. <laughs> but this staff, like teaching staff, doesn't do timesheet cards. Only if they're out, they do. For they sick are. time, yeah. for anything that's like sick time, professional time. Bereavement leave, any that well, sort of thing, they have, have to put. Like database thing that we have to do. Like a whole That's what they do now. Yeah. Oh, there's the COVID. Oh, what am I doing? I, I thought I wanted these last three bullets. Parent conferences went well. 
Free lunch Wednesdays are going well. I'm glad Christine shared that mm -hmm. slide. And then the last day of school is okay. the um, June 17th at noon. And we will say FY22 is in the books. <laughs> we'll say farewell. <laughs> we will say farewell. <laughs> <laughs> we are um, trying to put together June Institute for the week after that. We just have to get the details together for our staff and figure out that. What but does that mean? Yeah, that's going to be for teachers to do um, some professional development, work on things. We have to, we have to outline it. So we didn't have time to talk about it at our last no. team. No, yeah, the but they'll get paid. Another the teachers' contract goes. No, to it's, a yeah. it's, oh, a, it's a stipend. It's a big It's a choice. Work. They get to right. yeah choose the work and get paid. So that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. <laughs> Thank you, David. I'll pass that along. <laughs> okay. Uh, so now we are on to items for discussion. Um, so we're on the COVID update. COVID. I don't, I don't think I need to share my screen. I have a slide. But, um, so you probably all pretty, have pretty gotten aware. Have got a lot. Uh, um, <laughs> so I will what? say the optional masking oh, the went really well. The teachers did a great job prepping the kids for it. We had no, no issues um, awesome. about kids um, choosing to wear masks or not. It went really, really smoothly. So that was great. I, d I didn't actually anticipate any problems here, but um, that went well. Um, first week without masks, we had three cases. And then um, I don't know what happened. Well, I know what happened, but um, we have it. <laughs> since the 18th, we've had 39 positive cases um, in in I school. So you're still doing 439. I'm still oh, yeah, she's yeah, yeah, she calls. <laughs> I was going to say, Christine called a lot. I haven't gotten a call. I yeah, if, I mean, it depends which class yeah. was exposed. Yeah. Um, and yep. the classes that had cases had multiple cases. A lot. So, wow. yeah. Multiple cases. It really, I guess it shows what yeah. we were doing was yeah, pretty good. The mass yeah. helped, mm -hmm. helped mitigate. Um, we also had a lot of staff members get sick. Yeah. yeah. So Is that rebounding now? or? Uh, we still have some staff that sounded a little shaky last week at the SU. Last week we had a lot, um, and this week we still we have some new ones, but some are back, and yeah, so we're managing it. And people have been great about stepping up and helping, and um, um, so I think we're past the worst. <laughs> you need to go oh, find this. This is not real wood. You've I got know. real wood behind I know. you. <laughs> I know. Because I will it's tell not you, cursing. two weekends ago, I had 14 cases. Between Saturday and Sunday, it was crazy. Ugh. It was crazy, but um, we got through it. And you know, people have been sick, but not quite yeah. hospitalized or you know. So, yeah. um, did by any chance, like, did anyone contact the like Vermont Department of Health to say like, hey, like, do we have a protocol for what to do with this? Because I feel like, I feel like, in terms of putting it out there, mm -hmm. like, if we've got that many cases, the Vermont Department of Health, at least we can be like, we've called them, and they said, like, we're doing everything we're supposed to be doing, or maybe they could have given some advice or something. So Annette, um, our nurse, yeah. contacts our liaison to the, you know, VDH, which is Wendy Walsh, because the name is the letter no. Didn't get much direction, honestly. And are those actually cases being reported? Because it seems like the state they're numbers, they're, they're not getting reported to no, the state. No, because the state number on that weekend was like two. Seven. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, it, and Christine's like, I'm like, 14 phone no, calls. Because, and was, because we're not, when we were doing the rapid test, the test to stay, mm -hmm. it was in simple report. Like, we, it got reported mm -hmm. because we yeah, had to Yeah, but if you're at home doing it, but if you're at home, positive, it's on the bother. parents doing it. Yeah. It's not us. So we're not reporting those. We only report, if we test here, um, which we which we have found some sure. by testing here, it it gets reported to the state because we're still using that that online system to um, start the test and the test. So, I, I mean, the answer is no. They're probably not all reporting. Got yeah. it. Or I mean, no, even even not. people have said, "Oh my gosh, I didn't even think to report it." Yeah. <laughs> well, right. Yeah, That's where we are. Yeah. I mean, like at this point, you calling like is that. Is that a sufficient use of your time? Calling families? Yep. That's a great question. I don't know. I keep saying, do I still need to like, do this? 
I mean, I stopped calling one class and I just sent emails because I'm like, oh my god, they're going to get so sick of my message. Hey, how are you? Oh, I know, especially because it goes to the phone and then it goes to a cell phone and then it goes to a cell phone. Oh. Oh. Cell phone. So, I mean, like, I think it's a good I, question. I yeah. do. And I also think that, like, you know, in, in these circumstances, sort of calling, like, if, if Annette didn't get the information that she wanted from the liaison, then I really feel like the Vermont Department of Health, like, they're the ones we're supposed to be following. Like, we should be calling them to just be like, so, like, do we need to start? Like, does the principal still need to call or email or, like, let people know? And, you know, like, do we need to reinstate whatever? Like, what is it that we should be doing? Just so that somebody has something to answer to. Yeah. So that when parents call... But all of know, those decisions were made on the board made anyway. Right. And so Christine's not going to make a decision to start masking again. No, I, no, I get that part. But, like, you know, like, the Vermont Department of Health could have said, like, you know, like, we recommend everybody do some testing or, like, whatever they might. But, like... They, they recommend that anyway. Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you're exposed, yeah. they recommend you test on certain days. And we all... We Stay home if you feel bad. Yeah. What? So, so uh, to go back to the is it worth calling, what... How do you reach parents? Like, is calling the only way to reach some families? Do families all check email? Uh, when I when I do it, when I do the robocall setup, I you know it's both. It's a call and it's an email. Right. Um, typically, I mean I can just go to email. People aren't going to read. Right. Going to check it, but um, I do I don't think know how I mean, much that matters. To be honest, I, I mean it does. Like, I do think it matters because you're going to test more often if you know you've been exposed. Yes. Well, I'm just, yes, the, the, it's true. You're going to test family, family members. members. I think is really, is, is important. Like, if it's a phone call or email, I think it's still really important. I mean, I'm happy to do it. I've got to yeah. talk to a science. Person. Yeah. But I will say, I think people started call. wearing masks again yeah. after they oh, I know. were exposed. You know, people but started I mean, So masks. I get emails for, my, in, for the three schools that I'm yep. part of. And so I always get an email of her, like, hey, there was a case here, there was a case here. Mm -hmm. Over the last two weeks, we had, I don't think we have double digits. Yeah. I, I don't know what happened in You know, time. and it's just yeah. really, I mean, yeah. It really yeah. feels like there was and a super spreader in one class <coughs> or two. Yeah. Could have been. I mean, some of some of the cases, it's, you know, multiple kids and families. Yeah. And one yeah. gets it, a week later, another yeah. gets it. Yeah. Um, I think we're past the worst of it. But, you know, I already Back know. to the table. I, know. <laughs> I, know. Um, I mean, right? Like, right, yeah. yeah. No, it's also we're doing, I mean, right, that's true. We're doing all the same, all the good things, you know, right. it's still, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, it was a little, a little sketchy for a bit, but, yeah. And I just have to say, it was funny, because the phone calls were coming in that one weekend. Oh, my God. And, uh. One after another. <laughs> yeah, and so, my son knew what was going on, and, I didn't think to talk to him. I was planning on being like, you know, if, if, if you want to wear a mask, that's yeah. probably a good idea. And uh, I, he was gone, chaos in the morning. And I opened up the trash can, and there was a wrapper for a mask, like completely on his own, made the he decision. Yeah. 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 I just think that that's really cool that kids are there. Yeah. Like, we're there. Yeah. And, and he felt safe wearing a mask to school, and it, they've been really good about it. I was going to say, it. the kids aren't, haven't been the problem. No. Yeah, no. But it's just, it's neat to see the kids making their own decisions mm -hmm. on their own health. So. Yeah. And nobody um, says anything about it. You know, exactly. They, they're not, you know, pressuring each other not yeah. to. Or, you know, yeah. It's really good. It's just, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And so someday there won't have to be a COVID update in the I know. report. I know. <laughs> That'd be nice. Yeah. Good. I have to say the funny thing on masks, though, is that, like, now that people are comfortable wearing masks, I ran into a friend today that's wearing a mask because she took her mask off and she got every other bug and she mm -hmm. said, you know, Oh, what? yes, at my school there was a crazy <laughs> stomach bugs going around and all these other colds. And yeah. I'm like, well, I'm just going to wear my mask around. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's an interesting yeah. social dynamic. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Fingers crossed. We're done with that. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, exact path update slash discussion. So I think um, you know, I can start, and then Angie can chime in. Um, I don't know if it was reported at the board level. Well, Angie reported there were lots of um, there's lots of feedback gathered, lots of 
in-person interviews, Angie and her team came, talked to students, they tell you that department students did a great job um, mm -hmm. sharing information and presentations. And the middle right? level, really represented yeah. middle level across the SU yeah. because we weren't able to get in those classrooms. Yeah. So that was... Oh, so Heartland um, represented the middle level. Yeah, everywhere. so that was good. That was helpful. That well, we were they, able like, to see so many in, at Heartland. I think we went into every class, I think you every 6th, 7th, and 8th grade yeah. classroom. So. And the feedback was, you know, similar across the board. And the decision was made to make it optional, so teachers have the option of using it or not. What uh, is Exact Path? Uh, it's an online diagnostic tool that then, based on how students do, creates a learning path for them. So it's a, a way to differentiate. Yeah, adaptive them. learning. In the LA, my children, it's reading and math. And I have to say, like, in theory, it wasn't. Like it, it looked good mm -hmm. like and I can I see why it was chosen and I, I I know how it made the kids feel and I can't I can't argue that they're feeling like their feelings are their feelings and their feelings are very strong but um, having only done it once or like seen it done once um, I don't understand entirely how it elicits that feelings, but I think it's awesome that we are respecting mm -hmm. how the kids feel. Um, and but I, I do I want to say that like I can see why we picked it. And yeah, the team picked it. I mean, yeah, the it looked. We went through the process. The ones that just like it's, it went like a kid could do it for fifteen minutes, but then it says it has. But your focused time is actually only eight minutes. Yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. think that so that's. Okay. I think it's those things. A little bit yeah. frustrating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I was, I'm just making. Sure I mean, I'm ultimately, else. Yeah. it was that level of frustration that the adults were responding to because the kids were frustrated. So yeah. Yeah. Um, well, and it also like the kids that I interviewed just impromptu about it. Um, for some reason, and I still don't see what it was, but. Like, I think I talked to four kids, and it made them feel yucky about themselves. It made them have bad feelings about themselves. And it's just well, this, interesting. Mm -hmm. I've heard screeched in yeah. my house, this makes me feel stupid. Yeah. I hate this. Yeah. <laughs> it was, uh, you know, in watching the kids do it, and I tried to get around and see them, it wasn't very engaging. I mean, at the yeah. lower levels, I think it was more so, right, a little bit upper levels not so much um, I think the kids liked it more when the teachers assigned it as um, cause they had the yeah. flexibility to assign tasks oh so um, when it was more relevant it could, yeah. more relevant to what they were doing you know it put sense. them on a path and they might be learning about fractions in math but then working on something completely different on the exact yeah. path so they yeah. can see the connection although those foundational skills are important to yeah, yeah. You know yeah, um, yeah. But they, they learned a lot about yeah. implementing curriculum and what worked and what didn't work. And I don't think the pandemic did us any favors. Yeah. No. Um, so um, it was it was a great learning opportunity, and we will learn from it. From that, <laughs> we learned a lot. And a some lot. teachers are so. still using it a little bit. I know at the middle level um, they're doing it. I think once a week in. ELA because they feel like they don't have enough time for ELA, so yeah. that's what they chose to do. And the kids are grumbling a little bit, but they're you know they're doing it. Um, but I know they were doing. I guess they're ninety minutes a week. Ninety minutes a week was the requirement yeah. for exact math. That's like thirty minutes in each subject area, mm -hmm. which is a lot. That's a lot. lot. It is a lot. It's like ninety. Uh, ninety. Like I can think of ninety minutes of so many other things we were. Doing. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, <it's, laughs> I think we got there, Beth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is also hard to differentiate, yeah. provide right. intervention. Um, well, it's also you've invested in this right. thing, and you're like, wait, yeah. Yeah. Right. It was a tool to help teachers yeah. do that. So in theory, okay, you're going to be working on exact path for 15 minutes. I'm going to give direct teach for this yeah. group that needs more right. instruction. Sure. Um, but it just didn't. It just didn't seem to work work that way. Nope. Yeah. So yeah. Um, so I think we made the right decision. There, there may be better tools out there. We'll get yeah, that. But we'll continue to use it for the rest of this year. Yeah, and probably That's some next year, year too, because we have a two-year contract. Okay. Oh, so we ha I am working with the um, company to try to um, 
see if we can redirect those funds into other pieces of software that will oh, be more beneficial for our students. Yes. Um, the representative is, is with me in philosophy that, yeah, we want you using our products that you're actually using. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, it, exact has could be a could <laughs> right. be a um, tier two thing. It could be we didn't open it up for kids to use it at home in the evenings. So um, there are some other ways that we could offer it. So yeah, figure it out. Okay. Figure it out as we go. Thank you for work. Yeah. It'll be good. Um, okay. So we are now on to items for action. I told you this is gonna be record set. Heather, do you are not trying get to impress Heather. <laughs> do you not get used to this? Maybe, maybe it's just me. This no. is crazy. <laughs> I know. I just told my expecting that before nine. We can go over experience. Yeah. <laughs> I actually have an extra kid at my house that I need to drive home. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have a hidden agenda. Um, okay. Uh, so items for action. I will take a motion to hire um, two teachers, second grade teacher. Megan O'Brien and third grade teacher Megan McCarthy. You got it. I so move. Okay, Beth is going to move it. Is there a second? Second. Gotcha. Ah, uh, Colleen, you gotta be faster. Or no. <laughs> I wasn't even trying. I wasn't even trying, or otherwise I'd had it. Okay. Uh, again, I am not going to go with a roll call because we can see Colleen front and center on the screen. Um, Beth, make a motion. Is there? Yeah, Beth and then Heather. Um, is there any further discussion? We already discussed it, but no further discussion. Um, and neither of these teachers have to move, right? Like move across yeah, the country. That's great. Neither of them have to Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. It's a yeah. Thing. <laughs> yeah. okay um, so all those in favor of hiring Megan O'Brien and Megan McCarthy, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. And abstentions. Okay, so four to nothing. Awesome. Thank you. Um, okay, so now we need to set the next agenda. Um, it's gonna be May. Wow. May. It'll be May. Okay, May. Okay. Uh, so the date would be the uh, first Tuesday, which would be the third, 6 p.m. We all good with that? Yep. Okay. Um, and uh, we, uh, Lindsay is ready with a Nowhere to Hide update. She's going to bring the data, yes. Okay. Um, yep, she'll do that. Write this down. By the way, I, I forgot to tell you all, she's in, um, she's uh, participating in the Margaret Waddington Leadership Cohort. She was, so she's in uh, Greensboro. Greensboro, North she Carolina. Went today, which is oh, amazing. it had to be like seven so, yeah. years lost there today. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's why, awesome she, that's why she's not here tonight. Yeah, good for her. Just had to say E three. I know Angie's leaving us tomorrow too. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you heading? Austin. For work or fun? Awesome. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> See, no. Bats might do that out there. What? There's the Congress Avenue Bridge has the largest bat colony. We have reservations oh my God, to yeah. go in a boat underneath it's, the bridge. It's really? The largest bat colony. In We're going to be wow. batty. Friday night. In the middle of the city. Where? Austin, Austin Texas. Texas. That's awesome. It's like they just built that this. sounds really cool. Section. Like perfect for bats for some weird reason. Beth, how do you know this? <laughs> we'll be a family there, and bats are my favorite animals. <laughs> <laughs> Two things. And there, yeah. And therefore, and therefore. Uh, got it. Actually, bats and bridges are a thing in yeah. general. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. when we do bridge designs, bats are a big part of like yeah, the whole throw, scope like, of how you build it. Oh well, I mean, yeah, huh. just being part of huh. like. Assessments and yeah, all interesting. That. No, we had to we had to like delay some constructions at Vince because of um, my um, the hibernating time of certain bats. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you're only allowed to. Yeah, it's in. I didn't know it. It came up on a lot of projects this year. Um, okay, so we have a nowhere to hide uh, data dive. Yeah. Um, 
Angie, I think you had the CIP and school wide. Um, the continuous improvement plan Where? is not due till August 1st. Oh. And the continuous improvement plan can be submitted for the LEA, which means we don't have to submit, if I have this right, we don't have to submit individual plans by school. Oh, that's a new change. Yes. Wow. Which I you made Christine's well, night. I I'm think just saying, that, why are we duplicating this work? And, oh, and if we wow. do, I'm trying to figure out how to take strategic plan, recovery plan, RPS year three plan and the school wide plans and and the continuous improvement plan and <laughs> all the same. I mean it's ridiculous. The They're AOE the is providing us a cheat sheet, but they all have different, slightly different requirements. But they all do the same thing: comprehensive needs assessment. That's our data. Thank God for Brittany Preston and her work, right? Because yeah. that our data is right there. That's our comprehensive needs assessment, and then our investments. What we're going to do? Our strategies. They're always the same because it's intervention. And leader in me, and students. I mean, I guess the continuous improvement wellness, plan yeah. could be, you know, we could maybe choose something different than what's on the school wide plan, but I think it's just easier to kind of try to see where they all align. So that's my project for the spring. Okay. And then getting so, the grants. So you don't so. need to give us a CIP? I don't okay. think so. I think I can do it at the A at the A S U level. No. Okay. <laughs> at the S U level. level. Yes. Okay. <laughs> no, thank you. Well, that's good news, Angie. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, We're going to have um, probably hires to approve. Oh, right. Hires. Okay. Uh, what do we normally do in May? Um, we have to organize our retreat. Um, we should be done. When are we done with TMP? TMP is by the 22nd. April? Yeah. So I could bring you in. Oh, yeah, that'd be good. Data. That'd be great. Um, actually, that would kind of go with the Nowhere to Hide as well. And you, uh, it, it would be the first week of May. I was thinking, when is your evaluation of your school wide plan? You could report out on that. But that's probably going to be June's meeting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because you wouldn't be able to get it done. Um, so, I mean, did we take really anything off the radar list to try to put that yeah. on? Yeah, so the radar list is um, going to use your TMP data. The radar list is just uh, like not direct those things. to topics, but things to keep in mind. Yes. Yeah. Um, we get just plan a meeting for you, the yeah. interventionists like to do to, it. To think of topics that fit within those time, probably. categories. Does that make sense? So, like, we wouldn't take one of these and say we're talking about this. So okay. The radar list is like, these are, it's it's almost like our, it's, because we've got such a strong strategic plan for the SU, um, it didn't make sense for Heartland to create its own strategic plan. And so instead, we created a radar list of like things that are important to us that we don't want to lose track of. Um, and so, trying to continuously hit items. Look at them or talk about them? Is that like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So okay. that they're so that when we're sitting here trying to come up with things, that the radar list is in mind, um, and so like nowhere to hide hits the special education um, uh, part. Um, IDL hits the engagement. Yeah, IDL hits the engagement. Um, yeah. We haven't done so well with our community engagement. Telling you, no, yeah. We we physical plan. I mean, we have. We've con continued with our community dinner right. ever since. You know, in the sunny yeah. yeah, we can well, do better. So to hit the physical plan stuff, I had a note on one of these of smarter lunchrooms. Do yeah. we want to learn about smarter lunchrooms? What are smarter lunchrooms? Exactly. <laughs> I I googled it, Beth. But if you have information that you want to. I can do, I mean, the little presentation, that would be awesome. That makes me nervous. I really, <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm not an expert. I, I just know, like, there, it's, it's, it's lunchroom design, so it's, you know, round tables, trying to serve in family style, making it an actual environment where, like, you, you normally would eat. <laughs> That's something that we would Versus very institutional here. kind of idea. Also, the idea of how are you laying out your food, so, um, you're enhancing the smart smart food choices and things like that. Um, that's something, but Craig, yeah, I mean, Craig should know this. Mm -hmm. Is my, I mean, my 
I mean, he know. I mean, we know. Uh, like, we don't have an ideal space for yeah. right a dining hall, right? At all, we have a <laughs> yeah, multi-purpose yeah. room that we try to keep kids out of. Well, the gym is going on. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, you know, I think we'll yeah. continue with some family style lunches in the classrooms next year, even though, you know, COVID doesn't require it or recommend it. Um, I know that's. I mean, some kids love it, some kids don't, some teachers love it, some teachers don't, but it does, it, it is, um, it solves a problem, a space problem, in the multi-purpose room. Mm -hmm. um, Craig wants them in there, he's, he's pretty good about, you know, he wants them to see the food, smell the food, choose the and food. And choose the food, that's a huge which, part of it. Which, yeah. we, which we invested in trays that they can carry down the hall, and boy, we don't have many spills, I have to tell you, those kids are that's pretty good. Time to watch mm -hmm. those. Yeah. Choose your lunch. Life um, skill. It is. I think if we, we have a new serving line coming. We have a new serving line coming. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, because COVID was still pretty prevalent this year, teachers are still, kids are at their desk, don't talk, eat your lunch, you know, yeah. don't spread germs. Um, I hope that can change into a more, let's talk about, you know, put our napkin in our lap and have, yeah. you know, a conversation yeah. while they're having lunch together, um, more yeah. family style. Yeah, I mean, so some of it will not even just be things in play, but I think, yeah, like how can we help the teachers have engaging conversations right. around that. Yeah. what's going on? Because it's also just representing what, how right. can we all share a meal together? Share a meal that together. doesn't right. happen all the time for, for yeah. students. Yeah. yeah. Sure. So do we want to invite Craig in, or? What would you like him to present? Yeah. He's gonna he's gonna ask me that. Well, I know. <laughs> I <laughs> I guess I um I can't I can't dream without knowing what the expert dream is. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like I know that we have a problem in there. I do. I don't know what the solution is, mm -hmm. and I can't think of the solution because I don't know what the expert wants. But it's also I don't think. I think some of it is they don't have the staffing to necessarily necessarily like. So Craig is just like on fire and like he just runs from like oh, yeah, this person's God. out. This needs this. This is to right. him to sit at his desk and actually like Creates oh let right. me let me think about really what I want in my cafeteria. Right. He's not it's gonna not gonna have like yeah, he just so doesn't have right that now. space. I'm, I'm assuming this. I'm like a heat. No, no, that's he good. He is running. I usually see him and sweat is pouring out the stage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Literally. Hey! <laughs> he's melting! <laughs> he's melting. Um, he's pretty busy. Okay. So, he's pretty so busy. So that's my only, like, is, like, yeah, so, so my guess is he would look at you and say, get me another full-time person. Right. So asking him to, to do, do something this. more like that in July or August yeah. would be a better... Well, it's also thinking about, you know, even budget next year. What is that? Right. He may be a good... Um, Retreat agenda. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's a good mm -hmm. one. Okay. As um, we eat his food. Item. As we eat his food. Yeah. yeah. I like how I did that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Okay. You can come and show it if he does. Okay. Ruby and I went on a hockey weekend and we ended up at a bed and breakfast. And lo and behold, guess who's Craig. the chef? It's Craig. Craig. <laughs> and yep. Ruby, I, I looked at him and I, and I was like, Ruby, do you know that man? I do. Yeah, I do. thought we did. Do I have to take a And so, like, Ruby, like, went into the kitchen and was like, hi. Then oh, yeah, we did, and we ate his corn, we ate his hash for breakfast. That was great. That's awesome. Cool. It's, it's near Barry, right? Yeah, in Barry. Yeah. Barry Hockey Journey. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of trips to Barry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. um, actually, I, I just ran across our We Are Hope update, too. Um, we're still fully contracted with them for next year, right? Like, we, that I believe. We need to, uh, David's negotiating July. the contract right now okay. with, with Sean for next year. Like Sean stopped in and he did mention that the other day. They are doing a We Are Hope gala at the Marsh Marshland Farms. Yeah, it's the oh. same day as Willy Wonka. Yeah. Oh, that's why, yep. Yeah. That's why I noticed it. It is. I noticed that too. Um, I have to go to Willy Wonka. Yeah, I know. Well, I called Sean and told him that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know. He knows that it's the same day as Willy Wonka. I mean, he's supposed to be. It was supposed to be in the fall, but yeah. Uh, well, yeah, yeah, but that's what COVID was yeah. really happened. Yeah. Okay, so um, I'll stick with what we have right now. Okay. Um, Christine, stuff if need if, be. Yeah. yeah, if something comes up, let me know. Okay, I think we're there. Uh, is there. There's no need for an executive session. There's no need for an executive session that I know about. Nope. Okay. Um, 
So adjourn. I will take a motion. Go, Colleen. This is your chance to get on the minutes. I move that we adjourn. Ah, I second. That's second.